live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman here with SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program, VMworld 2016 in Las Vegas. Happy to have on the program. I've got a first time guest of customers. Uh, is Steve Bunch with Wabash National. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stu. And welcome back to the program. It was two years ago at VMworld, last time we had Sachin Chetto, who's with Nutanix. Oh, great to be back here. All right, so, so Steve, let, let, let's start with you. Tell us about kind of your role at Wabash, and for audience that, that's not familiar with the organization, just, you know, real brief thumbnail of the company. Yeah, so Wabash National's based out of Lafayette, Indiana. Um, we're the leading semi-trailer manufacturer in the United States. We've got manufacturing in five other, five other states than Indiana, um, as well as Mexico and the UK. Um, I think the stats are somewhere around six out of 10 trailers you actually pass on the highway are one of ours, so. Um, I've been with them for about eight years. Started directly out of college doing basic printer repair, PC imaging, that kind of stuff. Um, currently the server and storage manager, so leading a team of five great guys that uh, are managing our infrastructure, so, yeah. All right, and, and, and Sachin, uh, you know, real quick, other than, yeah. you know, bringing him over, uh, you know, what, what, what's your role? Uh, so I run uh, solutions marketing at Nutanix, uh, focused on the whole cu customer success around different use cases and verticals. All right, so Steve, let's right, dig right into it. So you've got a team, you manage your server and storage. It sounds kind of siloed, uh, almost. Can, can you tell us, you said kind of eight locations. G give us kind of thumbnail as to, you know, number of employees, you said, I think eight, eight sites. You know, what is, what's your IT look like and the size of the team? So I think if you actually gave me my t real title, it would be too long for uh, anything to be useful. So, so, um, so we've so, converged it. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> hyperlink. Hyperconverged that, so. Um, pretty siloed in the servers and storage, but we also handle all the applications and stuff on top of the servers. So um, nine data centers, so it's, it's interesting trying to bring all this stuff back home. Um, most of our manufacturing sites will probably always have some kind of server and storage footprint on, on site, so. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you've been there for a number of years. You've been there longer than Nutanix has existed at companies, so <laughs> why, why don't you walk us through kind of that journey as to, you know, what your infrastructure has looked like and what was going on in the business that made you, you know, look at making a change? Okay. Um, so our environment's before Nutanix was super complex. We had uh, highly available sites, but different storage on each side and different servers on each side, different sand switches. It was just overly complex for what it was. Um, the business was growing very quickly, mostly through acquisition, but most of just by selling more trailers. So um, the IT, IT team wasn't growing at all. So I had to find, we had to find a way to kind of do something different, maybe updating firmware on a SAN on the weekend probably isn't the best use of your time. So yeah. um, we, we did some research, found some hyper hyperverge. Maybe maybe this will work for our environment. So, and, um, and when when was that? Uh, so we actually bought our first stuff in de December last year. But uh, I'd been on the radar for about the last year. Yeah. yeah so, so, so Sasha, let me ask you. Let me see. Yeah. Um, IT a little complicated. Teams not growing. Uh, throwing M and A. Uh, yeah. Each application has its own little silo of what they're doing. Th yeah. th that's not what we've seen out there for you know how how long? <laughs> yeah, forever and ever. And that's that's actually a great point, right? Businesses are now relying on IT for actually as an enabler for some of these functions, right? Whether it's business growth, digital transformation, or even M&A from that perspective, it's actually a key differentiator for the, from a strategy perspective. All right, so, so, so Steve, was this a you know, project-based deployment? Was it you know, new data center upgrade? What, what did that first uh, uh, piece look like? And, and who championed uh, you know, moving to a hyper-converged option? Um, yeah, so it was a little mix of all that. So actually a new data center. Um, actually, the IS, local ISP was building a new data center across the street from our uh, manufacturing. So um, we currently have two data centers that are off-site from our production, so that's nice. Um, it was a five-year refresh time, so it's time to do something different. Um, get some new hardware, some better performance, some easy, easy management. Uh, interfaces, so, yeah. Okay, and, and where in the executive chain was it? Was that, you know, if you got the refresh, you have a certain pile of money hopefully sitting there, yeah. but did that kind of meet what you need? Did you have the executive buy-in or is, is somebody yes. driving kind of innovation? Yeah, so I was a champion on the project. Um, was pushing very hard. Um, it was interesting with the team, trying to get them experience with it. So Nutanix actually has a community edition, so free software you can actually use. So that was, that was critical in getting the team on board with, with some new technology. 
All right, Saj, pretty, pretty typical for a lot of your customers? Yes, matter of fact, uh, since releasing Community Edition, we're seeing a lot of first-time users of Nutanix start their journey down that path, get familiar with the product, and again, Community Edition runs on a variety of different platforms, so they get a chance to experience it. Um, now we've actually changed the, the, uh, the setup, so you actually can do a test drive of Community Edition in the cloud, so you really don't even have to install anything. And that's very typical of uh, customers nowadays, where they want to know what does that mean from an operational perspective, and then how does that affect their day-to-day, -day, day two operations. All right, so, so Steve, talk, talk to about us about that rollout, you know, how did it kind of meet from your expectations, if you could share any details, of, you know, number of nodes, number of sites. Yeah, so um, one very cool uh, issue that we were trying to resolve was, so we had installed our normal infrastructure at one of our remote sites, and it took two guys, two days, to actually install three servers, a storage array, and sand switches. Um, so our first purchase of Nutanix was two three-node clusters that we set up in Metro Cluster, and we had that set up in two hours. Um, so two different sites, Metro Clustering, so we could vMotion VMs between the two in two hours. Just okay. was crazy. And, and, and why you to comment on have you Have you added to that uh, since, since, since you've done uh, the, the kind of the, the, the four-letter word in the storage industry has been, you know, migration yes. uh, <laughs> for, 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 for so long? Yeah. It, 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 tell us what your experience has so, been. Yeah, we're 100% virtualized on VMware, so it's not difficult. Um, we purchased 16 more nodes, so we're expanding both, both sides of that, uh, mainly at our main data center or main corporation, corporate headquarters. So, um, just doing basic store, shared nothing storage emotions, and it, it's working really well. So oh, trivial, real easy yes, now. It is. It's, it's just like you know, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 when you think back to the way you were doing things before, you know, what, what's that mean for your business? It, it, it saves us a ton amount of time. I mean, um, I think some executive staff was worried that we weren't prepared because we were talking so. It's so easy. Just right click. It's like copying a word document. So it took some uh, talking with the management teams to get them on board with what we were doing and explaining it how it works and. Um, they wanted to see big project plans and all that stuff. And I'm just migrating VMs, so it's not difficult. All right, so you freed up all that time. So I'm sure you cut staff and did that, or are there <laughs> right. new projects that they're doing? What, what not work happen? In, yeah, they're just not working 80 hours a week anymore, so <laughs> it's all good stuff. Um, Wallbash is actually, we're, we were just kind of a, an IT service to the business before, so we were just, yeah, like we said, setting up printers, setting up new servers, that kind of stuff. But now we're actually doing some cool stuff with business analytics and pulling in data from uh, PLC machines on the floor and actually putting some sensors on a, on a test trailer, so doing humidity and vibrations and stuff like that. Yeah, so, 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 so Sachin, I'm curious, mm -hmm. kind of the, the mindset of IT so much is, right. you know, I need to control it, I need to understand it, risk is right. a big thing. I was listening to a podcast that John Troyer did with a couple of your customers, right. and there was this guy, he's like, he kind of flipped, he's like, ah, eh, you know, remotely, I go on my, uh, you know, mobile device, I, I say I do the upgrade, I yeah. get on a plane, yes. and when I've landed, you know, everything's fine, and I talk to most <laughs> IT guys, and they're like, you know, He's crazy, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, what, what what are you seeing with your customers, and yeah. you know, how do they change uh, and adopt that? I mean, the whole the whole concept of day two operations has changes with Nutanix, and and you've heard us talk about this uh, at .next, and even even before that, that we have this whole concept of invisible infrastructure. Our whole goal is to make infrastructure so easy to manage that it is almost invisible. From, uh, from an operational perspective. Now, coming back to the comment around the upgrades, the whole non-disruptive upgrade model is something that we've been very proud of. Uh, we introduced it a while back, and we've had a lot of customers actually go out and, and try upgrades uh, on their, their test systems using, again, you know, mobile devices, et cetera. But the whole point is that it's given them time back in their day and ta to tackle, either take time uh, that they can actually go and apply elsewhere, or even give them time back in the day that they were initially not intending to spend on it. Uh, so from an upgrade perspective, the ability to get new features in a very quick fashion and then ability to remove the whole plan downtime concept has been great. All right, so, so Steve, I, I wanted to just kind of step back a little bit, give us kind of a wider view of your IT, because it doesn't okay. sound like today, Nutanix isn't the whole environment, you haven't you know, swept the floor with it. How do you manage that kind of compared to everything? How do things like replication and backup you know, fit into the overall puzzle? And, okay. uh, um, so we're starting to roll it out at our remote sites actually. So um, we've got three sites that need refresh and we're looking at putting Nutanix there as well. So um, it gets interesting with, uh, back, can we just replicate that data back? Is that a backup? Is it, is it okay to do that? Um, or should we be putting backup software there like Rubrik or something else? So um, it, it's definitely, it's been interesting. So we, we run everything from SQL to SAP to Exchange actually on our Nutanix nodes. So yeah. All right, so, so Steve, your team's gotten uh, you know, some time on the solution. You've grown it now. 
you know, what advice would you give your to your peers? And uh, kind of a follow up question to that is, you know, what are you asking of kind of the vendor ecosystem? What more do you want them to do to kind of you know make your life easier and run your business better? So uh, some pointers for migrations. Um, I think. Maybe you should get your tap applications teams involved in the migration. So um, we didn't. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. The infrastructure team and the application team. <laughs> yeah. you know, once again, somebody's crazy here. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. So we actually didn't tell our uh, application team that we were migrating their their servers to the new Nutanix nodes, and um, they came knocking on our door asking what we had done, and they were seeing three, four x uh, performance <laughs> increases on their backup uh, times. So. Um, I told them what we had done, and they were pretty excited about it. And oh. then actually, we upgraded our software that day on Nutanix to uh, 4.6, which increased performance more. And they came knocking oh, again. Oh, so, so, so you didn't involve them, that, but it was a good experience because <laughs> they're like, good. "Wait, yes, <laughs> what happened? It's, yes. it's running so much faster." Yes, they were, they were worried something was broken or their software was wasn't working correctly. Okay. So, yeah. How about kind of looking forward as to from your business, the IT needs? You know, what, what, not, not just from a Nutanix VMware and yep. beyond. You know, what are you looking for to help? So I'm excited. Better? My team actually has time to do some training, so I'm I'm pushing them hard on programming, so Python, PowerShell, and getting them involved in uh, maybe setting NTP on, a, on 30 VMware nodes probably isn't the rest use of time, so let's automate that, let's fix it, let's power script that stuff. So trying to get them more experience in, in areas they aren't maybe comfortable in, so yeah. Okay, and, and brought back to kind of VMworld itself, you know, what are you bringing back to your team from what you learn at this event? So first VMworld actually, very cool. Um, lots of people, I think I've done every other world there is, but um, VMworld's been been great, so the network's, the community's awesome, so um, everything from V Brown Bag to uh, just sitting next to somebody and eating a, a lunch and learning something more from them than you would have maybe a breakout session. Yeah, bumping so. into people at parties and stuff like that, too. <laughs> so, uh, no, we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wait, they, they, they do have parties as part of the community. Yeah, you talk all night, everything. Sachin, uh, yeah. give you the final word, yes. uh, so kind of takeaways uh, from, from VMworld that you're seeing, yeah. especially from the customer viewpoint that you've yeah, talked so to. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm always excited to be at VMworld because you get a chance to really interact with so many of our customers and, and the community in general. Um, it's an exciting place to be. It's a an exciting forum to be. Um, it's interesting to see the shift from storage and to hyperconvergence, and now onwards to enterprise cloud. So, from my perspective, the the key takeaways I'm taking back is that people want to move, keep that that transition going to cloud-like infrastructure that helps like, kind of bring the cloud infrastructure on-prem. And we're 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 going to keep innovating on that front. Um, and, and if I were to also summarize one other thing here, I mean, it's great to have customers like Steve who are looking at the whole IT as an enabler for the digital transformation. So I encourage, again, all our, all our your viewers to look at IT at, from that perspective. Yeah, so, you know, my seventh year at VMworld, it's always great. It's, you know, the, the VMware customers that are here are ones that have, you know, c continue to innovate, uh, not only when they deployed virtualization, but uh, hopefully they, they don't become satisfied with what they've done. They keep moving forward, keep trying new technologies. And, and on the storage piece, uh, we kind of half-jokingly came in and said, this used to be called Storage World, trying to make it invisible and trying to make it look more like a cloud. Maybe we should make it storage uh going forward. Uh, kind of like in the cloud, they are talking about serverless. So uh, lots of great stuff here at the event. Thank you both uh, for joining us. Uh, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2016. You're watching theCUBE.